for instance, when we're speaking with them, it's so foreign, this idea of having the fuel and the coolant be, you know, one and the same, especially in a single, single fluid uh, molten salt reactor. You know, you start to question them over some of their tests, and, you say, and they you say, well, would we still have to file something for like a loss of coolant test? Oh, yes, you would. And it's like, but see, if we lose our coolant, then we lose the fuel too. It goes into those, well, not that one, but you know, if, our, if our slide was up there, it goes into the storage tanks, right? And if, even if you have a catastrophic loss of coolant, you know, i.e. the terrorist, you know, hugging the reactor and blowing himself up, you know, it splatters on the ground, solidifies, or runs down into the drain hole and into the into the uh, into the coolant uh, containment uh, gallery, you know, and they're like, yeah, no, uh, you have to describe that, and it's a, so it's such a it, the the molten salt reactor is opposite land, you know, it's a mirror image of of solid fuel, and so the end result is going to be, to your point, uh, Bob, China is putting one to two billion dollars. If you look up uh, the Chinese Academy of Sciences, they had a press release in 2011 and, and, and just recently Mark Helper has written about it. Uh, you can look up the Chinese Academy of Sciences is working to develop the what they call the TMSR, the thorium molten salt reactor, and they are skipping over Gen 3. They're going right to Gen 4 and, uh, uh, and they've put real money billion dollars. There's zero dollars in the United States being spent on this. The other place that might get this done is Canada because they do have a huge interest in process heat. And if you look at that thing as just a, as just a hot cell and you get rid of that whole Brayton cycle turbine hall in the middle there, what's valuable to a lot of people is 800 degree always on process heat that's very cheap and somewhat mobile, certainly, you know, safe and efficient. And as uh, Bob said, it's it's a zero pressure system. You could, if you took the lid off of the containment there, you know, so there's no water to flash off, you know, there's no water to disassociate. You you know, you're not going to have uh, uh, catastrophic events like like that. That gets to be pretty attractive to somebody who's trying to suck tar out of the ground and they want mobile lily pads to, to do that. So the idea of a 10, 50, maybe 100 megawatt mobile reactor that could fit into a, in the back of a container system and sent to uh, sites by helicopter, that might be worth a billion dollars worth of R&D to, that's nothing to, to petroleum companies. Uh, do you see any benefits in uh, international cooperation in the field of R&D like Generation 4 forum or things like this. I'm working with those companies in China, in Russia, in Europe. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <How> about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think China is doing exactly what it needs to do for its people and to raise them out of poverty and give them a standard of living that's that is. Uh, you know what they deserve, and their 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 government should be congratulated for that. The flip side of that is, I'm an American. I have to live somewhere in North America. This is my country, and my government is not doing what it needs to do to ensure a future and to ensure a standard of living that we can live with. Okay, so you say, well, would it help us to partner with you know China? Well, that's exactly there was. You know, after denial after denial by the DOE and Oak Ridge, there's a memorandum of understanding between the Chinese Academy of Sciences and Berkeley, MIT, Oak Ridge to work together. Well, we are handing over the nuclear patrimony of the United States to China with the explanation that, well, you know, they're the workshop of the world and, and they'll, you know, put it to ground and commercialize it and we'll reap the results. And I. <laughs> We're not going to reap the results. We're going to exchange Saudi Arabia for China. They're not going to give us these reactors back. They'll lease them to us, you know. So, uh, and that's their right. They're doing what's right for their country. I'm not against China. I am for trying to develop this in the West so that 
There is not one more monopoly that we have to deal with. Just like rare earths is a tragedy for the West, the situation we've gotten ourselves into, if we let the premier nuclear technologies get developed by a single nation, then we're going to be in a tough spot, all of us. So there's a pure cycle, if you guys are at all interested in this, there's a very pure cycle called the uranium-233 to thorium cycle, incredibly pure. You think, you know, your, your system makes very little waste, right? Well, if you run the pure cycle, uranium-233 thorium cycle, you get like a hundredth of the amount of waste that, that, that you would get. It's, that's how pure it is. It's called the pure cycle for a reason. And, but it's based on U-233. Well, all the known U-233 in the universe resides in the United States, right? Uh, it's something on par with something about five or six tons of it at Oak Ridge National Lab. Another three, four tons of it is located elsewhere. And right now, just this week, the, D, the DOE has uh, decided that, that uh, their ongoing effort, it's been nine years of energy solutions trying to uh, spend a billion dollars to denature and uh, vitrify the, the uranium-233 at Oak Ridge. And so Battelle wants that U-233 sits right in the middle of the Oak Ridge campus and they want that land back. And why they can't just pick it up and move it over to Y-12 I'll never know why this is such an arduous thing. Maybe there's all sorts of technical stuff, but not nine years and 200 plus million dollars worth of technical stuff. Uh, one way or another, we've got to save the U-233 because that is, that is the patrimony of the United States. To reproduce that stockpile of the U-233 would cost billions of dollars and probably never able to be reproduced. And that is the one advantage we have in the world in terms of who's going to develop the molten salt reactor based on thorium well that is the one keystone element that we have over every country on the face of the planet everybody else would have to use u-235 or some sort of electron beam called the accelerator driven system i mean it's you know every other way is not as good as using u-233 and we're about to spend a billion dollars to destroy it so if you care even if you support another technology, maybe you could do me a solid, give me your business card, we could all write senators together and beg and cry on their doorsteps not to waste a couple hundred million dollars of America's money to destroy our future. Just a thought.